everyone welcome back to my channel for this video i'm doing a tutorial on how i completed this uh quiet book page for my niece's book so i begin with laying everything out on cricut design space if you create or insert a square uh, size it to the dimensions of your page and then just send it to the back of the design you're able to visualize where everything will go or what size you want everything to be and it just makes it way easier for you and here I'm cutting my fusible interfacing fabric. Um, mine is one-sided, which means it has glue on one side of the fabric. Um, and this helps to harden or stiffen your book pages. And I cut out my fusible fabric about half an inch larger than it should be. And here I'm taking my damp cloth and ironing my fabric that will be glued onto my uh, fusible fabric. So you take your piece of fabric with the design facing down towards the table and then take the fusible fabric with the smooth side facing towards you so you want the glue to adhere to the fabric. And then also don't forget to use the damp cloth to um, glue those two together. And here I'm just cutting off any extra fabric to the dimensions of my book page. All right, so now to the fun part. Um, this definitely took some time compared to the other book pages I've done, but it was definitely worth it. I had my Cricut cut out 26 squares for the 26 letters in the alphabet, and then I also cut out the letters on some HTV. Um, and here I'm just weeding out any excess um, vinyl. Using my mini heat press, I ironed on all the letters onto the squares, making sure they were centered. So you can organize them however you prefer. Um, I ended up doing them across the page. So A, B, C, D were on one page and then E, F, G were so on and so forth on the other page. Um, or you can do A, B, C, D and then E, F, G right underneath. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. But this is just the way I did it and I really liked how it came out. And to prevent any unraveling of the thread, I do maybe like two or three forward stitches and then do a back stitch or do two or three back stitches um, to secure the thread into place. When turning the corner on the square to make the corner sharp, make sure to leave the needle inserted into the fabric, lift the presser foot and then turn the fabric, put the uh, presser foot down and then continue. And here I'm just putting the thread to the back of the page. On the page where my pencil will be, I made a hole and I inserted an eyelet. I used eyelet pliers. Um, and then on the other page, I made two holes about five inches apart, and then I also inserted um, eyelets on that side as well. Mm -hmm. 
The idea of having the pencil there was so that my niece can trace the letters with it. I decided to attach it to the page with Velcro, but also um, I want to do ribbon just so that the pencil doesn't actually detach from the page. Um, so I just cut out the Velcro and attached it to the back of the pencil. The rough side um, of the Velcro I attached to the page and then the softer side I attached to the pencil. I stuffed the pencil with some filling that I got at Walmart and using some scissors I made sure to evenly distribute the stuffing into the pencil. After sewing the pencil I just inserted uh, the ribbon into the eyelid and created a knot uh, just to secure the ribbon into place. The idea for the wooden beads was to mimic the abacus and I got these wooden beads from Joann's and they come with different sizes so you can use larger or smaller ones. I decided to go with medium sized beads um, so that I can fit 10 beads into the yarn. And for the string you can do either ribbon or yarn. Um, I used yarn because I found that it was easier to slide the beads through and they wouldn't be too tight on the yarn, um, but whatever you want to use is totally fine. And then I just insert the yarn through both eyelets and created a knot on the back. To secure the knots that I created on the back of the page, I cut out two sets of stiffened felt and hand sewed those onto the knots and this just creates more security for the yarn so it doesn't come undone or loosen up over time. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. It was a lot of work but I absolutely loved the outcome. and. Honestly, it was probably my favorite page I've done. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye!